it is time to welcome our friends from Near Media. So we've got Greg, David and Mike. Uh, Near Media is made up of expert local strategists, Greg, David and Mike, who share research and analysis to help us better understand the local marketplace. So we're going to see them now. Hello. Hi, Claire. Hi, how are you? Good. Excited to be here. Fantastic. Um, Claire, I need, to, I need to fly you over to have you decorate my backdrop. I, lo <laughs> I love oh, the space you're you in right now. It's great. You just get loads and loads of plants, basically, yeah, and clearly. just put them on a shelf. I, I can, <laughs> yeah, I'm available to do that job for you. That's Excellent. fine. Yes, yes, that would be great. So we are super duper looking forward to your talk because you are going to present on the local SERP what new user testing reveals about searcher behavior. So can't wait for this. Um, can I remind everyone to write your questions in the chat? We um, have got the talk now, and then we will have, um, I think it's a full 10 minutes, all being well at the end for Q&A. So get your questions in there, and I will hand over to you. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks, Claire. So uh, as Claire mentioned, this is us and this is what we do. You can get our newsletter at nearmedia.so and we also have a weekly podcast, which uh, Claire has been on and we'd love to, um, we'd love for you to sign up for that. But looking past that, we're gonna get into what we're here to present, which is some user research data. Why don't, David, why don't you give us an overview of, of, of these studies? Sure, so we've, uh, we've conducted two of these studies now uh, in Two different or one study in two different verticals um, where we essentially present users with a task we say you know you need to Im imagine yourself in this scenario and you're going to google to help solve this problem that you're having um, and we watch the we record the sessions of users either on their desktops or on their phones uh, and we watch what results they're engaging with and we record attributes of the results that they engage with position on the page. Um, what if the if it's a especially if it's a GDP listing, what the attributes of the GDP listing are, how many reviews does it have photos? What do the photos show those kinds of things? And then where are we they clicking? have this, where are they clicking? Right, we have this and then we, we ask them that the point of the exercise is to say, uh, you know, which one of these based on the results that you see in Google, which one of these uh, businesses would you contact first to help you with this problem? Um, and so then we, we aggregate these results in a totally, uh, <laughs> there's gotta be a better way to do this, but a, a massive spreadsheet, uh, and, and pull a whole bunch of, of analyses from, uh, the aggregated results from, from each user. So, um, we've done this now, as I said, two, two different verticals. Um, I think a big caveat here that, that you've got here at the bottom of this slide, Greg, is that, uh, initially we were only able to do this on, uh, desktop results in the first vertical we looked at, which was legal. Uh, the most recent one, that, which we just completed in medical, we had a, an even split of desktop and mobile. So some of the differences between the two categories that you see uh, in the, the upcoming slides may be due to the influence of mobile uh, on the medical results. But um, generally speaking, I think that there's some pretty interesting takeaways that, that we're excited to share. Right. And the other the other thing is we get a lot of qualitative information from these studies, which is adds a color and nuance that you wouldn't get if you were just looking at clicks and looking at uh, looking at keywords. And, um, you know, Mike, this is your this is your slide. So why don't you give us 10 seconds on what this is? This actually came out of a Google study, and it's one of the best studies that Google has ever done called the messy middle. Just when users aren't quite sure they go every place and look at everything as they sort of navigate with, within themselves what they want and where they want to go. And so frequently these journeys are not linear at all. And it's just important to keep that in mind, even when you're watching our data, which is not particularly linear, it's probably even more nonlinear than that. Yeah, and we saw a lot of that nonlinear behavior in, these, in, the, in this research. Right. Okay, so this is broken down into different components. The first one is the uh, the local SERP and how it's organized and the 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 overlay on the slide is blocking my view okay there it's gone all right so so what we saw what we saw in these two studies is is a lot of directional similarity 
93% of legal results were localized, almost 100% of the medical results. And, you know, again, mobile is in there, whereas it's not in the legal category. David, would you define localized for the listeners? Uh, sure. So localized would be a result, any result that includes a, a, a business that has a physical location in a market where it's very obvious that that business would not rank globally. Right. So Google is shown it's essentially the results that we were seeing that we have seen since the Venice update in 2012, where there's sort of an artificial boost given to local businesses, even for a really competitive term, uh, you know, like a like personal injury lawyer, just for example. Right. Even if that query doesn't include near me, um, even if that even if that search result doesn't include a pack, which I think that one probably does. Um, but you'll see you'll see website results showing up that are small law firms in this case that would never rank you know they, they're only ranking in the market where the searcher is doing the search they're not ranking in every market across the country so one of the to point out on this slide is the the difference between um near me searches in legal and in in medical where there was a higher comp mobile users a lot of mobile users just um use the search suggestions and, and use near me there. Similar number of packs, although higher in medical, um, there were more non-local results uh, for legal or less localization um, and uh, at the bottom ads. So let's, so this is an interesting uh, slide because in medical with the mobile users, the pack was pretty much at the top of results every single time, but it wasn't in legal. You, you guys wanna to speak to that? I, I, I mean, couldn't really explain this. Yeah, I, I'm not sure why this was the case necessarily, but um, we certainly saw strong pack position uh, in, in both categories. And I think that, um, I guess my, my takeaway here is that as you're doing keyword research, one of the things to consider is where is the pack on the page uh, for a given sort of keyword theme, or if it's a really high value keyword for a specific keyword. And, you know, do you have a chance organically to be in the slots above the pack where your click-through rate would likely be considerably higher. Right. I mean, when you look at this from the previous slide's point of view, a lot of results were localized. Not as many legal results had packs. When the packs were there, they were lower, which just meant overall organic had a lot more opportunity in these search results than in the medical search results where the local pack was the dominant sort of theme. And Prior so it's important, this, always... important to understand what your category does and how it does it so that you can allocate resources between web and local. The variability of where the pack was in legal was really surprising because it yes. was all over the place. So um, you skipped, Greg, you skipped the previous slide, which I actually did want to talk about. Oh, no, it, 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 it was jumped way the, ahead. The, the it, breakdown of where yep. ads showed up. Yeah. Yep. It, it jumped way ahead. Sorry. Sorry about that, folks. Okay. There Great. we are. Yeah, so um, you know the legal vertical overall, I think, was was more heavily monetized, um, which you know I would say both of these categories are equally your money or your life and high margin uh, spaces to be in. Um, but I did I did find it interesting just like the number of three and four ad uh, search results in legal, and we didn't see that quite as much in medical. Um, and, and there were, and there were yeah. no, no LSAs at all in medical. And no, no LSAs, LSAs at, all. at all in medical, right. So um, again, this is just another theme of like, you know, thinking about where you should be allocating resources. Like maybe in medical, you, you might be able to get away with just doing, you know, uh, local SEO for, the, for GDP as well as your website, not as heavily ad driven. Uh, I don't think that's the case in legal. Just, you know, again, just based on the number of ads that appear and certainly not to steal our own thunder later on, but LSAs, if you're, if you're in legal, you pretty much got to be in LSAs to, to uh, have the biggest chance of recruiting a potential client. And here's LSAs appearing in, in uh, legal, but not medical, as we said, uh, quite frequently, 20, almost 23% of the time. So, um, one of the interesting things uh, that we didn't see in legal, but we saw in medical, is people sort of explicitly expressing their distaste for ads. 
people scrolling past them or remarking, I don't trust sponsored results, I don't look at this. Um, yet, despite that, still had a lot of ad cl clicks, which we'll talk about later. So we are talking about that. Presumably we don't have to add any further comments. When I, when I created these slides, I thought we would pause and then discuss, but since we're doing that in real time, we'll just jump over that. So now moving on to clicks and conversions, where did these happen? When did these happen? So this is kind of a challenging slide perhaps to, to penetrate visually, but um, uh, one of the things that it says is that, you know, as, as Mike remarked earlier, in legal, we have many, many more organic clicks. Again, this is the desktop only versus medical where we've got an even split. Had we seen, uh, you know, mobile users in legal, we might have seen a, 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 a split between organic and GBP more, more equivalent to the, uh, to the mobile user. Do you want to make any comments on, the, on this slide, either of you? Just the one that I want to highlight now, and we'll discuss it more later, just is that when LSAs are present on the left, they have a big yep. impact. Right. So, so 20, 25% of the clicks. So this is, um, this is where the clicks occurred for uh, GBP and the finder and uh, legal on the left and medical on the right. Um, 72% in the top three. Also in the right, there's a concentration in the top three, but it's, it's less so. It's only a little over 50%. And so let's talk about the finder. So the finders, interestingly, are different between legal and medical. In the legal finder, often, it'll, in fact, the pack, when you click on a pack listing, will take you to the finder, whereas in medical, it takes you to a profile. And once you're in the finder, the legal finder is much more, the images are much more about the lawyers, and in medical, it's more about the place and the location, and secondarily about the practitioners. What's amazing in both, but particularly in medical, is that there's such a long tail in medical that once people get in the finder, and this is true both in mobile and desktop, but particularly so in mobile, people continue to scroll. And we saw people going down 15, 20 results regularly in their scroll patterns. And that to me is something we never, we, I never thought, I guess, that the finder was that heavily used for decision making. And one of the yeah, possible. For, Go ahead. For me, it's not for me. It's not just about the length of the tail, but the thickness of the tail. Um, I think is very surprising. So uh, this slide should should be great news for everybody who's watching or attending this event today. Just you know, showing that hey, if you can even get in the game and you've got a really compelling Google Business Profile with a strong review and rating uh, attribute with good photography, as Mike said, if you're filling out some of these uh, newer attributes like identity attributes and whether you have online booking and that sort of stuff, um, I think just, just getting in the game is, is you know, gonna give you a significant chance of earning a click um, regardless of where you're ranking in the finder. And just a note about identity attributes, we had a lot of anecdotal, and particularly in medical, a lot of anecdotal evidence that people look for the diversity that they want in their lives. And so if you've got a diverse practice, you want to be demonstrating that visibly, visually, uh, in a way that people understand it intuitively, instantly, that it's not, uh, that, you know, if it, that it's not sort of buried, right? That it, it pays off. Photos are the main way that people did that. And that, and one of the th primary things that people look, were looking for, one of the comments I would make about the, the depth of the finder is that we, and this, was the, this goes to the qualitative research pieces, we heard people talking about reviews and searching for better reviewed practitioners. They were looking for people with more reviews and better reviews very often. That may not explain all the behavior, but that was anecdotally coming up with some regularity. Although in medical, the images were so his consistently bad across so many locations that they didn't comment on the images because they were so bad. I mean, it would be interesting to see if we could find a market where the images are good in medical, unlike in legal, where there's a lot of lot better imagery. So, so this, is, this is a related point. This is the organic click-through um, curve. And what we observed here is it mostly more so in legal than in medical, but um, it's, a, it's a flatter curve less of a drop off than, you know, you might factor than the conventional wisdom would hold. 
Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, the, the top, again, similar to the finder findings, uh, if you're in the top five or six results in either of these two very competitive categories, you know, you stand a strong chance of earning a click. And um, that's not, to, and the other piece of this that I think uh, was sort of surprising to me is just the number of multi-click sessions um, where people, you know, did not go with their first choice. They would, they would evaluate, I think in legal, our medium was like three different, um, three different potential practices or practitioners before deciding, okay, this is the one that I would talk to first. Um, and so again, like, I think this is great news for anybody attending today's event is like, just get in the game, just get in the top five or six results. Clearly there's a major benefit to, to ranking number one or uh, in the top three uh, organically. But I think that that's, it's a, it's a much flatter and much thicker uh, click through rate curve than I would have expected. The other comment I'll make is just, you know, to kind of, we didn't, these aren't exactly one-to-one -one graphics kind of, obviously I wish that we had done the, the version on the right for the one on the left and legal, um, but just showing how dominant the pack was in the first position. Uh, and I think that a lot of that was driven by the pack being in the first position on mobile and then dumping people into this very immersive finder experience um, that I think that that's something to be aware of if you're in a, a heavily mobile category, that that might be an indicator that actually the, G, that the GBP side of things really is where you should start uh, and less so organically. And I would have two comments about that overall, just that Google's going to give you your share of, of clients and you have to convince them either through the GBP or the website. And also we saw a fair bit of cheating on review schema in legal that often drove results further down in organic. That when people saw the stars, even if they were inappropriately assigned, uh, people responded to that in a, a very aggressive way. So just, we have to be a little conscious of time, but just a quick comment on this slide. Um, the, the, let's talk about the ad, the ad position that in, in, in primary and mobile is a lot of people clicking on that, that top ad that got a lot of ac action. Yeah. Nothing else to say, especially in mobile. <laughs> I think that that's, again, you know, the goal here is we're trying to help folks allocate resources accordingly. And if you're in a heavily mobile category, it's maybe a better, better place to spend on ads. Okay. So this, this, uh, what I want to highlight here probably is the impact of LSAs. Either of you want to speak to that? Mike, you go for it. Sure. It just so, so on the right, when LSAs are present, and this was in the legal vertical, the distribution of clicks was roughly even between organic, local, and the, and the LSAs. And even, I know you said that people didn't say this in legal, but I heard a number of people anecdotally say that they ignored re ads. They don't ignore LSAs. And it, it points out several things that because of the Google screen, people respond to them differently. Maybe they don't understand them, but they're very powerful. And it also points out that Google can drive user behavior across the page just by changing the layout of the page. And so the idea that number one is always right or always best, well, it's generally true, but it was much more true before Google started throwing in all these other results. And you have to keep an eye on results because Google will shift layouts of the page to, to drive user behaviors wherever they want. And, and Google, um, you know, the, the LSAs don't look like ads. They don't look like traditional ads. And many people didn't fully understand that LSAs were ads. And that was undoubtedly part of the Part of the behavior there's there's reviews there's google screen there's images it doesn't really look like a traditional google ad and this is reinforced because the local finder in legal looks just like the lsa finder in fact the lsa ads are right at the top of it so it's like there's very little distinction between an ad and a regular non-ad listing in the pack in the finder as well so google is reinforcing this sort of non-distinction and this is just an example of uh, of a legal um, uh, essay and and you know an anecdotal comment about people not entirely understanding what Google Screen is, but feeling like it's intuitively like it's a good thing or it's it's a a, a verification badge of some kind. Okay, zero click. So um, you know, Grant Fishkin has done a lot of work on on zero click, as have others, but he's the sort of chief uh, spokesperson for it and. Um, you know, we've we've talked on our podcast about how a lot of zero click action is in local, and this confirms that. 
71% of GB engagements and 54% on the desktop were zero click. I, I, I find that. zero click to be a sort of negative take on it. I see it as lead generation. A lead's a lead, doesn't matter where it comes from. So well, true, but but so it's it speaks to G, G, GBP optimization, but yes. um, but hard, you know, obviously difficult to track that. Yeah, and I, I qualify this. I mean, to me, this is a, an interesting sort of paradox of hey, organic click throughs are still very much alive and well, particularly in legal, and the depth of those organic click throughs is, is substantial. But the flip side of that is, you know, zero click is also very prevalent. And um, in particular, like even if you're not, even if it's not a zero click quote unquote conversion, right? Where they're, they're on your GBP and they click to call or, uh, you know, book an appointment online directly with reserve with Google. In a lot of cases, the zero click thing was a disqualifying click that users didn't like what they saw on a GBP, not a good enough review profile, terrible photo, and then bounced back and look for something else. And so that's also something to consider is just, even if you're not getting conversions from your GBP, you might be getting disqualified. Turning and people, people off. Going to yeah. Competitors. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if there's anything to add. On this, this I don't think much to add here. Yeah. Just, yeah. That, you know, there's, there's overall, we saw like zero click conversions were fairly low on both mobile and desktop, but for folks that did choose something from a GBP, uh, on mobile, it was, you know, basically 50% of those were zero clicks. They did not go through to the website that was listed in GBP before saying, this is who I'd call first. So this is a little bit of a, a controversial slide, perhaps 75% of our participants on the legal side looked at websites. They clicked through and they looked at websites before deciding which provider to contact. Uh, I, I tend to believe that um, that that's going to be actual IRL behavior. David was a little more skeptical of that, but it, it's, yeah, a, I'm it's a pretty hot. Yeah, go ahead. I, I'm skeptical largely because I think you know, we were asking people, who would you contact first, right? We weren't saying who would you hire, but I think that in order to get that first call that your, your website may not be as critical. And then once people have a call with you or interact with you over email or whatever, I think maybe the website might play a role prior to actually deciding. But I think that this, I think that our study mirrored uh, what I would expect in the real world uh, from from people in the sort of commercial research phase of their decision making process. There were a lot of people doing credibility assessments, looking at pictures, looking at years in business, looking at at, um, at you know sort of the overall kind of impression coming from the website. Okay, so reviews. Obviously, reviews are a huge uh, conversion factor, number one in the local ranking factors um, study. Uh, there's a little bit of a paradox here in the sense that this, you know, by far, this is the top factor that people are looking at in both categories. But they're also really just looking at review volumes and ratings numbers. They're not reading reviews. But do, do either of you want to um, add any color to these slides? Well, I was shocked, particularly in the medical field, where there was this insistence on the best, and the best meant 4.7 and up, which isn't a very big, as we've talked about, not a very big window. We have a slide on which that. You've got a slide. Yeah. And the other is just how few people actually read the damn reviews. It's like, geez, yeah. you know, you're going to talk Third about how important not. they are, then at least read a few of them, you know? Never did. It was well, like super shocking to me. Not Everybody never, commented, not never, but in, less frequently than you might expect. Yeah, yeah less frequently than only I thought, a, anyways. Yes. Only about a third of people were reading reviews. Right. Um, so, so this to your point, Mike, about the the the, the sort of threshold that uh, star rating threshold that people wanted to see. It was kind of unrealistically high. They wanted to see a lot of review volume, and they wanted to see really, really only the top top. Providers, those were going to be the ones that they were focused on. Yet, if you got to five stars, you only had five stars. There was a lot of skepticism. It flipped to to skepticism and and uh, uh, doubt about the accuracy of those reviews. So the takeaway is get a lot of reviews, but keep it at four point eight five. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. That's the idea. <laughs> to that point, you know, considerably higher, and I don't have. I sh should have this, maybe Jamie or one of the bright local folks could pull this slide up, uh, you know, in the green room or whatever. But um, 
the consumers review study that Bright Local does every year, like this seemed considerably higher uh, threshold than what that typically reports. So yes, um, yes, very interesting to, to see just how demanding these consumers were. So. Well, I mean, there'd be a difference between the abstract idea of how what would be the sort of minimum you would accept, and then actually when people are in the process of, of, of looking for real. Right. Slightly providers. different question. Right. Which one are right. you going to so call first versus how low would you go to and as, a, right. as an exclusion threshold? And so, so this was this is just the point that we made that only third of users, even the people who are saying reviews are the most important thing, and I love reviews, and reviews are really critical, most people are not reading them. They're only third. Some people really did thoroughly look at review text, but most people did not. I don't know if we have a slide on this, but it's equally important on the website that people really expressed a predilection for showing not just first party, but first party and third party third parties yes. from a range of sources on the website. And they really like that. Yeah. If, you, if you've only got a selection of first party reviews and they're all great, it's, it's, gonna, it's not going to be persuasive. Right. Okay, so we're, we're, we're closing in on our fi final slides. Photos and websites. We talked already about visits to websites um, a little bit. Photos in, in this slide of sort of the things that impact decisions, right? Reviews are, are the top on the left. And then photos are sort of toward the right. But this kind of understates where photos figured in, in the medical context in people's decision making. Um, David, do you want to say anything? Or Mike, do you want to say anything about that? Well, just one thing that struck me in the medical was just the anecdotal comments about how a site felt. And this was a very vague comment, but the color scheme combined with the photos, the content are of the, the people photos, friendly, are the people look friendly? Do they look like me? Those kinds of things played a huge role, even if photos weren't explicitly mentioned that the site looked and felt right to them. And this was even more important or as important as having all the professional qualifications, information and services was whether it looked and felt right to them. So it, it's one of these intangibles that, and in medical, there were very few in the GBP listings. So it was one of the things that struck me was there were so few people just didn't comment on their absence or presence. The first thing people did when they were looking for doctors was try to find the doctors. When they went to websites, we did an analysis right. of medical websites as well. When they went to websites, and this is true for GBP, they want to see photos. Who's the doctor? Let me see all the doctors. That was one of the first things that they, that they did. Which speaks to not having a banner image that's a stock photograph, but having a banner image that's your staff. And it isn't just your white male staff. And to the to the point of stock photos, um, this this is maybe hard to to view at a glance, but these are anecdotal comments from the from the uh, from the recordings that we did that just show how people love love seeing the providers. They want to see who's doing the work, and they and they really, for the most part, don't like stock photos. Stock photos wasn't toxic every single time, but in many cases, people thought it was deceptive or or diminished trust. So there was a lot at stake in the quality and, and the content of the photos that people saw. Okay, so then we're, we're almost perfectly on time here. This is our final set of takeaways, um, which repeat some of the things that we've, we've said or many of the things that we've said, and we'll just leave them up for people um, uh, and we can answer questions. But do you guys wanna say anything sort of big picture uh, about the uh, the findings or some of the things might maybe that we didn't include in the stack. Yeah, I think there's a lot to be learned from these um, the, from watching these search sessions. Um, that obviously, you know, we've presented a ton of quantitative data here today, but the qualitative stuff was almost more interesting to me. It's incredibly useful for positioning uh, how you position your business to understand the attributes that people care about. As you guys have both said, you know, trying to identify what's resonating with potential patients or clients or whatever customers, depending on your type of business, what's resonating with them on your website, in your GBP, what's resonating about competitors' profiles, competitors' websites. I think that's just a really important exercise that, um, particularly if you're a big multi location brand, that I would absolutely uh, undertake. Um, to, is to get the, the qualitative data, even if you know you you sort of have you think you have all the search stuff dialed. Um, I think it it really will make a difference in in helping your conversion rates. But as you, an old friend can... of ours once said, David, watching four hundred videos is hard. 
Well, you get the, you get the why. A, a you lot do get of the why, a lot of yes. a lot of the click studies don't give you the why, and this and the qualitative stuff was very very interesting, and it and it really added a lot of nuance to uh, to the to the other insights. So, Claire, I think we're ready to go to questions. There are any questions. There are questions. There are questions. There are many questions. Thank you very much. That was excellent. And um, obviously, like the quality, qualitative, qualitative element is that is the bit where because we don't see things how our uh, potentials see things. We see the soot completely differently. So I love those little vignettes of what people are saying um, and what they're looking at. And I bet watching 400 videos was amazing. Uh, whoever got to do that. Brilliant. So we tedious, will move. <laughs> No, fun times, fun times. Uh, so let's move on to Well, if questions. you want to volunteer for an internship, Claire, we have a spot. Oh, uh, all right. I will. Uh, I'd actually, obviously, with my master's uh, in uh, science, I'll run that for you, Mike. That would be lovely. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, let's, what have we got on, on questions? Oh, okay. We had a few at the end, but <laughs> anything else uh, that you could give us as a little snapshot roundup take away please thank you mine would be you have to understand it by by your categories that and you have to understand the relationship between localized organic and local packs and figure out what people are using and prioritize that yeah i guess my takeaway is uh what i said earlier the qualitative stuff is huge i think uh i didn't I sort of over indexed on the importance of GDP, even though it was the most important thing in medical, like, it, you know, that, that sort of squared with my sort of preconceived notions going in. But I do think that there's a huge opportunity with localized organic results, uh, you know, down to those sort of top five or top six results that I, I, I had underappreciated prior to doing this research. And I would just quickly say that the user behavior is a lot more complicated than we, the way that we talk about it. There's a lot more. There's a lot more going on than we we think with with how users think and and their their activity. Yeah, for sure. And it's a sample set, so you're just looking at themes within. If you did another thousand, goodness knows what 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 other uh, yeah. themes you'll be adding on in there. And, it, um, and it's going to vary by vertical to some degree. Yeah. And what Google's doing with the SERP that day as well. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, next question, please. Travis would like to say thank you for your very powerful presentation. Um, what what I agree about the customers not reading the reviews, uh, but does that negate the importance of Google reading the review? I don't think so. I think Google's using review text as one of many signals to, to rank businesses. And um, the other thing is, I think, uh, which we didn't include a slide on this, but for the folks who did bother to read reviews, a lot of them actually went straight to the negative reviews and they were mm -hmm. looking to see what the negative reviews were talking about and whether that was a relevant thing for their business, uh, for their decision. And also, did the business respond to the review uh, in an mm. empathetic way? So mm. just an example out of medical, right? Like a lot of the negative reviews were about staff interactions or difficulty in booking or whatever. And mm -hmm. people were like, yeah, if it's a good doctor, I don't, I don't really mm. care. Like I'd still go. Mm. Or so one person even said, gee, but they had a great response. So therefore, I'm still going to go with them. Right. We only had, we had less than 10% of responses. But in cases where people were reading reviews, as, as Mike and David have indicated, people were paying attention to those responses mm. very often. Mm. So definitely mm. don't ignore it. Just know that it's like your star rating and, and review volume can be disqualifying if they're not yeah. at that certain threshold. So Yeah, but they're super important for anyone that's on the fence or wants to drill down a little bit well, more. Yeah. So. And, and Google's going to kill all re reviews that don't have text. Oh, okay, cool, great. <laughs> okay, okay, let's have another uh, question. Okay, so for legal and medical, where do you recommend we put more focus on? Ranking organically on local or national SEO? I think wow. Crystal's answer in the last one is where's the money? If That's the money right. is coming from local, then local. If the money's coming from yeah. national, then national. I mean, I think you follow the money. But I think if it's a multi-location firm that has a firm 
commitment to their local entities, then I, you know, uh, I mean, I don't, I have a trouble envisioning somebody that has locations and only cares I, about national. But I think, I think this might be David's point about where you put your efforts, where you put your emphasis. I mean, a lot of people try and compete with content uh, against sort of national entities that are going to outrank them every time. This, David, this is your, this is your point. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. To me, it depends entirely on your business model. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, are you looking for eyeballs or are you looking for people to walk in the door? So um, I think that that would, that would largely determine my answer to this question. So we'll have to put it down to, a, and it depends, but it's like contextual yeah. then for you, really, as, as one would expect. One thing we did see in medical, even in localized medical, though, was it was very difficult to rank for condition right. terms in local this is the localized point. search right that yeah. you you could rank for for practitioner terms but you couldn't mm -hmm. rank for you should you shouldn't be writing a lot of content about diabetes and heart disease if you're a local provider right because you're mm -hmm. never going to rank for that unless it's like heart disease clinics locally but that's right. like right. say yeah exactly. so it has to have the local slot you, doesn't you have it? to so. look, you have to do the keyword research to understand which SERPs mm. are localized and gear your content mm -hmm. strategy around those SERPs mm. brilliant have we got time for another one I think we do um oh we, we're diving into uh, review uh, support here I did write an article at, at near media on uh uh how to fight fake reviews, and I lay out step by step what you need to do. Okay, fantastic. We've got lots of uh, yeah resources that can point you in the right way for oh, that. Oh, but I want to go. I want to send them to mine, clear now. No, of course or... I want them to go. When I say we, uh, oh, I mean okay. us. Oh, as, okay. as it's it's as... it's near it's nearmedia.co slash analysis. Okay, you should go where there. My, you'll find Mike, that's where you'll find Mark's article. Okay, brilliant. Um, uh, oh, I, I did ask Jenny, can we ask mine? Um, uh, you show two uh, different, there's this a gap between the percentage of clicks on the top three between legal and medical. Um, yeah. And I was just wanting to dive a little bit into search your intent and why they go elsewhere in those, uh, in those verticals. So I'm actually not sure that there was that big of a difference. I think, as I was oh. saying, I think the slide overstated. We just oh, we were okay. showing two slightly different things. So um, there was a lot of pack engagement in both categories when the mm -hmm. pack was in the top two or three, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so that slide on the right with the spike on the first uh, element, it really showed like, hey, if the pack is number one, yeah, it's going to get a lot of clicks. I think the same thing was true in legal. And we saw yeah. a pretty similar click your rate curve sort of down to the fifth or sixth slot in both categories. So I, that's the first thing I'd say. The second thing I'd say is that that spike in the click and pack on number one probably was driven largely by mobile, which we didn't look at right. in legal, just okay. a, a, right. an error, mobile and desktop an error just something missing from that methodology in the first. Person. But that's great because yeah. it's iterative, isn't it? It's early days it and then it's like, you know, what works best and how are we going to standardize this across everything that we do? So um, that was interesting to see that as well. Sorry for misreading the data there, but it was very interesting to see. Um, I think we are at seven o'clock. So I need to say well, so seven o'clock here for me in Wales, not not for you. Top, top of the um, hour. Top of the hour. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming today and sharing all of that insight. So big thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks, yeah, for thanks Claire.